I'd love for us to talk about stress. The obvious next thing to think about was stress, right? Because it's like, okay, well, you want to be healthier, fix your diet, fix your exercise, and stress less. So I started doing some digging into the nature of stress, and a couple things were clear. One was that the public health message was very clear, right, that stress was bad, right, unmitigated and harmful on our health, our productivity, our relationships, our fertility, our cognition, you name it. The messages that were out there by and large, oversimplified messages focused on the damaging consequences of stress. But as you know, if you actually dive deeper into the literature on stress and the origins of stress, what you find is that the literature, like most literature, is not so clear cut. And in fact, there's a large amount of evidence to support the fact that the experience of stress, meaning encountering adversity or challenge in one's goal-related efforts, does not have to be debilitating. And in many cases, the body's response was designed to enhance our ability to manage at those moments, right? So some research showing that stress narrows our focus, increases our attention, speeds up the rate at which we're able to process information. There was some research out there showing this phenomenon of uh, physiological toughening, the process by which the release of catabolic hormones in the stress response, recruit or activate anabolic hormones, which help, as you know, build our muscles, build our neurons to help us grow and learn. And there was a whole body of emerging research on post-traumatic growth or this phenomenon in which even the experience of the most traumatic stressors, the most chronic and enduring stressors, could lead not to destruction, but in fact to the exact opposite, to an enhanced sense of connection with our values, connection to others, sense of joy and passion for living. I am Brian. Thank you for joining us today on Brian and Paul. We are reviewing the discussion between Andrew Huberman and Aaliyah Crum in regards to mindsets and stress. And is this something that is bad for us, good for us? How it impacts not only our minds and emotions, but also our physiology, our bodies. As we go through this discussion, I suggest you ask yourself this question. What is my mindset towards stress? Is it something that can actually help me or is it something that harms me? My work since then has been not to try to argue that stress is enhancing and not debilitating, but try to point out that the true nature of stress is a paradox. The true nature of stress is manifold and complex and lots of things can happen. But to question what's the role of our mindset about stress in shaping our response to stress. So some work had already been done looking at your perception of the stressor, right? So do you view a stressor like a challenging exam or a health diagnosis as a challenge or a threat? And that had shown pretty convincingly that when you view stressors more as a challenge, less as a threat, that your brain and body responds more adaptively. What our question was, was to take the sort of psychological construal one step higher in abstraction. So not just the stressor, but the nature of stress, right? Do you, you know, at at that core level, do you view stress as something that's bad, is going to kill us and therefore should be avoided? Or do you view some uh, stress as uh, natural and something that's going to enhance us? We set out to design a series of studies to test the extent to which these mindsets about stress mattered. We designed a measure to test people's mindsets about stress, simple questions like what extent do you believe or agree or disagree with statements like stress enhances my performance and productivity, stress heightens my vitality and growth, things like that. And we found in a number of correlational studies that that a more enhancing stress mindset was linked to better health outcomes, better well-being, and higher performance. So then we set out to see if we could change people's mindsets. And in our first test of this, we decided to do so by creating these multimedia films that showcased research, anecdotes, facts about stress, all true but oriented towards one mindset or the other, right? So you can imagine one set of films showed basically the messages that were out there in the public health context. The other showed, hey, you know, stress is, you know, stress has been linked to these things, but in fact, the body stress response was designed to do this. Did you know it could do that? And we had 
um, empowering images like LeBron James making the free throw in the final minute versus missing it, right? <laughs> so all of these things are true, you know, possibilities, but oriented to two different mindsets about stress. So either people saw a video that basically made it seem like stress will diminish you, crush you, reduce you, yes. or a video very similar, stress will grow you, bring out your best, and maybe even take you to heightened levels of performance that you've never experienced before. Exactly. Examples in the sports, we also had like true leaders emerge in the moments of greatest stress, you know, Churchill. And so all those examples are out there for both the enhancing nature and the debilitating nature. And our question was, does orienting people to different mindsets change how they respond to stress? So this study was done in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. We worked with UBS, a company, a financial service a company that was undergoing pretty massive amounts of layoffs. So these employees were stressed about being laid off. They were taking on more pressure. It was just a tough time. We randomized them into three conditions. And this was all pre-work before getting a, a training on stress. But the three different conditions, some watched no videos, some watched the stress will crush you videos, and some watched the stress could enhance you videos. So it was a total of nine minutes of videos over the course of the week. And what we found was that led to changes in their mindsets about stress, which led to changes in their physiological symptoms associated with stress. So people who watched the enhancing films had fewer back aches, muscle tension, insomnia, racing heart, and so forth. And they also reported performing better at work compared to those who watched the debilitating videos. Now, interestingly, we didn't make anyone worse with the debilitating videos, well, that's which, good. Is, which is good. We that's had good. told the, uh, the IRB we didn't expect that because that message was already out there. That's what they were already seeing. That wasn't new to them. It was more this enhancing perspective that turned out to be inspiring. I love that study. I love this study, too. The fact that nine minutes of watching videos from this study by Aliyah Krum impacted these participants positively in their performance and their physiology when reviewing that stress can be enhancing. When I think back to most of my life, I've fallen under that stress is debilitating, stress is bad mindset. And this specific discussion between Aliyah Krum and Andrew Huberman is one of several of the aspects about mindset and stress, as I've learned recently through podcasts and various scientists, that has actually helped me learn significantly how my mindset impacts so many areas of my life and how I approach situations and experiences and how I digest them and understand them and respond to them. As we continue on this mindset series, we'll be focusing on the next two episodes discussing Navy SEALs and their stress enhancing mindset and how that predicts their success and going through their intense BUDS training. And we'll be reviewing additional tools that will help us grow into and progress into this stress enhancing mindset to help us achieve our goals, objectives, and make progress in life. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as Paul and I continue to bring topics that we think will not only impact and make progress for our lives, but we think will benefit you, our greater community.